I'm Walter Bosley, author of the Empire of the Wheel trilogy. I'm going to read a selection from Empire of the Wheel 3, The Nameless Ones, available print-on-demand only at lulu.com. Chapter 22 The Wineville Chicken Coop Murders Born in Saskatchewan and raised in British Columbia, Canada, Gordon Stewart Northcott moved to the Los Angeles area in 1924 with his parents. Northcott's father purchased a plot of land for him east in the Inland Empire rural community of Wineville, just west of Mount Rubidoux, and there Gordon built a chicken ranch and house. Northcutt brought his nephew, nine-year-old Sanford Clark, to live there with him. As well as sexually abusing Sanford, Northcutt abducted several boys along Valley Boulevard from Colton to Pomona and brought them to the chicken ranch, where he would sexually abuse them. Initially, Northcott would drive victims home or let them go somewhere away from the ranch, but eventually he crossed the line and began to murder them. No one can be certain exactly how many boys Gordon Northcutt raped or murdered. Some suspected it was as many as twenty, but it could never be proven. He would imprison the boys in a chicken coop where they would be repeatedly raped before being axed or clubbed to death. Northcutt would force his nephew Sanford to participate in either the murders or disposal of the bodies, which he would bury in shallow graves filled with lime in order to dissolve the remains. The crimes were exposed after Sanford's sister became suspicious and paid a visit to the ranch. Sanford had written letters to Jesse, but she didn't learn about the crimes until Sanford confided in her during the visit. When Jesse returned to Canada, she reported Northcutt to the American Consulate, which alerted the Los Angeles Police Department. Northcutt's capture involved a manhunt into Canada. His arrest and subsequent trial were highly publicized, as were his ultimate conviction and execution. Convicted of only two murders, which were proven based on body parts and personal belongings of victims discovered on the property. Sanford Clark testified about other victims, including the unidentifiable youth known as the Headless Mexican, whose body Northcutt had dumped on a roadside after destroying the head with his nephew's forced assistance. Though Northcutt's streak of horror only brought him the two actual convictions, he was brought to final justice case closed. Or was it? Next section, Prominent Pedophiles. According to author James Jeffrey Paul in Nothing is Strange with You, The Life and Crimes of Gordon Stewart Northcutt from Ex Libri, 2008, Northcutt may have revealed a link between his crimes and the Empire of the Wheel mystery. According to author Paul, Northcutt had told his nephew Sanford that he, Northcutt, had killed the headless Mexican victim because the boy knew too much. Following his arrest while he was in prison, Northcutt told other prisoners that he rented out his child victims to pedophiles. Northcutt also allegedly told three officials, San Quentin Warden Hollihan, a guard, and a stenographer, that he had been pimping for pedophiles and the victims included a young girl and a few adult males among mostly small boys. Northcutt also claimed to have had helpers named Alva and Ernie, who lived at the Wineville Ranch with him, though no one was ever identified as such. Warden Hollihan stated publicly that he suspected it was one of Northcutt's tricks to appear insane, but Hollihan would not release the document presumably prepared by the stenographer present during said confession. As of 2007, said document was still not included in the case file in state archives nor any files with documents related to the Northcutt case. This shocking confession filled a document several pages long, according to Warden Hollihan himself. It allegedly revealed many crimes other than murder. Though sources claim Hollihan did not take it seriously, the warden did send his investigators. It turned out the Riverside authorities didn't take it too seriously either, we are told. Whether they did or not, the document is missing from the files. Clinton Duffy, the assistant warden, also received one of these confessions of a greater conspiracy involving others. Duffy said, Rarely have I ever heard a more revolting story than Gordon Northcott told me that day. 
He gave me a lurid account of mass murder, sodomy, oral copulation, and torture so vivid that it made my flesh creep. Not only had he dealt in the traffic of children, but he named prominent citizens of several Southern California communities who had gone to his ranch to indulge in the same practices he did. Since there was no way of proving any of these charges, nothing ever came of them. No corroboratory evidence was available, and the men Northcutt mentioned categorically denied his allegations. Duffy's wife would later write that when investigators were sent to find evidence, though the bodies were not found on the ranch, the children in question were indeed missing. Another Paul dismisses the Duffy's point of view because they got a few details of Northcutt's story wrong, specifically those surrounding exactly when Northcutt's father died and whether the man was committed to an asylum at the time. Yet, as Paul demonstrates in his own book, Northcutt was changing details so much that how could anyone get all the details accurate? And how does the date of Northcutt's father's death change the confession? Paul's dismissal of the Duffy's assessment could be the popular sleight of hand of today's skeptic logician. When you can't actually dispute the point, attack the point maker. The problem in dismissing Northcutt's tale of a conspiracy involving wealthy pedophiles and young boys whom he claims to have murdered is that the prison doctor, Leo Stanley, was also convinced Northcutt was telling the truth with his particular confession. And Stanley had otherwise come to believe that prisoners and criminals were liars, yet he believed Northcutt. That there remains the issue of the missing document, several pages that should be in more than one official file on this case, missing to this day, should be alarming. If Northcutt's story was not true, what is the harm in its existence? Why not let us see it now, going on a century since these crimes were committed? The answer, of course, is the list of names Northcott offered up, especially within the context of the Empire of the Wheel mystery. Northcott's strange tale of prominent pedophiles and gruesome murder is too good of a fit to ignore. But Northcott changed his story and apparently never mentioned these mysterious Riverside men again. Whatever Northcott meant or knew, if what he said was true, it went to the grave with him. He was hanged on the 2nd of October, 1930. One might easily dismiss this story in light of the subsequent trial and conviction, and Northcutt was executed anyway, so it might not seem to matter to some. It appears the guilty man paid for his heinous crimes, and there's nothing more to be said. But again, we must consider the context of this mystery. Is there any reason to suspect any association between Northcutt's confession and the milieu of the shadowy magic and strange activities akin to the San Bernardino working? Sesha Ree, my consultant on identification of telluric currents, has identified a curvy linear current flowing right through the former town of Wineville, now called Mira Loma, because of the Northcott case. But the main telluric lines do not run through the old Northcott property. Of course, this does not preclude smaller curvy linear lines of energy linked to the property, but we must honestly admit that if Northcott was doing anything associating telluric currents with his crimes, it might not have been on the property. Was Northcott even aware of this natural phenomenon? Would it have mattered if the operative activity was actually committed by the unidentified prominent men? If the sexual abuse was being done on points along telluric current lines, then it might not matter where Northcott disposed of the bodies. It is highly likely that he knew nothing of this potential aspect of whatever may have been going on. It must be considered that Gordon Northcott may indeed have been abducting young boys on behalf of powerful men in Riverside who could threaten Northcott with something so horrible that he preferred to take all the blame and suffer a hanging rather than expose them. What could be so frightening to him to not take down others involved? If ceremonial magic and the worship of voodoo entities were at the heart of the Wineville chicken coop murders, we can only imagine. Northcott was a disturbed individual and not a genius, so such scare tactics might have worked well on him. Gordon Northcott's case was dramatized in 2008 in director Clint Eastwood's film Changeling. Though the film's focus is primarily on Walter Collins' mother and her plight to discover the fate of her son, it is a worthy starting point for anyone interested in the case.
Empire of the Wheel 3, The Nameless Ones, is available, print-on-demand only, at lulu.com.